So once we have our layers imported into After Effects, we now want to bring them all together and create something similar to this. Let's start by getting the multi ambient layer and dragging it to the new composition button. I'm just going to make sure that my composition is in 16 bit color depth. So this three colored icon, let's go to set project working space and under depth, this should be set to 16 bits per channel. Let's uh, bring the multi Atmos layer above our ambient pass and set its blending mode to screen. If this menu isn't there, press F4 to cycle through and uh, just find screen or add in this uh, section. And now we can do things like change the opacity of this layer. If I press T to bring that up, I can adjust the strength of the fog effect. I can also do things like change the tone of it. If I go to color correction and hue and saturation, we can use the hue slider to change the color of the fog. And this is the level of control you gain by separating our render into different layers. Okay, moving on, we said we were going to draw the sun in After Effects. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's create a new solid and call this sun. And in the mask menu, let's get the ellipse tool. I'm holding left click here to select the ellipse. Drawing from the center, I'm gonna hold shift and control to draw a perfect circle outward from the middle. Then if I press V to go back to my regular selection tool, I can double click the edge of the mask and then press shift again and the up arrow key to move this up. Let's color this in using a gradient that's found under effect, generate and gradient ramp. And the start color is going to be a kind of a desaturated pale yellow. And the end color is going to be more of a red this uh, sort of thing with more saturation. Click on the gradient and move the top handle to be within the inside of our circle and do the same for the lower handle. This needs to be behind our buildings. So this is where those object buffers or masks will be used. If I get object buffer number four, this is the mask that I created in Cinema 4D for the sky. So let's bring this in above the sun layer. And in the track mat menu, we want to set this from none to luma mat and point to that layer above it. And when I do that, now you see the sun is behind there. If the track mat menu is not visible, once again, just press F4 and it will come back. Next up, let's color our sky. This is going to be another solid layer. Let's call it sky color and also going to be a gradient. At the top, it's going to be a dark blue color. And the end color is going to be somewhere around 320 degrees for the hue. Make it quite dark also. This is also going to be isolated to be just over the sky. So once again, using the object buffer number four as a track mat, and just place this under our sun object and also behind our Atmos layer, actually. The Atmos layer should be on top of everything. On our sky layer, let's adjust the position of the gradient. We can maybe pull this down slightly and then push this up to somewhere, maybe a third of the way up the frame. You can see the stars have now disappeared, so let's bring them back. I'm going to copy our main ambient layer so press Ctrl and D. Let's put this above the sky color and its object buffer. And I will get the same buffer still. And I think it's the only one we're going to actually use here. It's good we have the other ones there in case we want to use them. But uh, for this particular project, actually, we just need the sky buffer. Okay, let's set up our Luma mat. And if I solo this layer on its own, we can go to color correction and levels and let's create some contrast and boost the bright parts of the frame, just the stars really. Let's bring back the other layers and set the blending mode of this uh, stars layer to screen. 
And now if I turn it on and off, you can see we have brought the stars back. Next up, we want to create some glow. This is going to be on an adjustment layer. Then under effect, stylize and glow. We can start by setting the radius to 200. It's too bright, so let's push the threshold all the way up to 100%. And as I do this, you can see that it's moving to the brighter parts of the frame. And it gives us this nice glow around the sun. That's very similar to what we have in the original example. Next, I wanna adjust the intensity of the multiple colors effect. You can see here, it's a bit more muted compared to what I currently have. So to make that adjustment, I'm going to duplicate our main layer once again, go to the top one, color correction and tint, and let's map white to orange around 35 degrees on the hue and maximum saturation and brightness. And then I will simply press T to bring up opacity and lower this to 50%. And now this is the difference. This is uh, after and before. You can see our colors have been muted just a touch, but there is still some variation like we have here. Let's add some glow to the lights. If I take those two layers, right click and pre-compose both of them into a single composition. Let's call this lights pre-composed. Then go to effect, stylize and glow. And I'm just gonna set the radius to about 20. If I want the effect to be more extreme, I can lower the threshold. And as I do this, you can see the smaller lights in the distance start to glow also. That's too much. So I'm really just gonna leave it at what we had before at 60. And uh, that's it, just a subtle glow effect. This is uh, before and this is after. Okay, and uh, from here, it's really just some minor adjustments. We can maybe play with the color correction. Let's create a new adjustment layer. And on this one, we're just going to put a curves adjustment. And in the red channel, let's bring that up in the shadows to create a faded red look. Maybe balance it out slightly with some blue. I can maybe fade the shadows even more if I go back to the main channels where it's all three of them combined. Just trying to get this as close to this as possible. I can see the sun is a bit brighter in some parts. Now that can be the highlights. On the sun layer itself, we can brighten up this color just a touch by desaturating it. And on our glow layer, we can play with the threshold. But uh, I think about that is close enough. Maybe make it more red down here and move the handles just a touch. Before we do the final preview, let's uh, take everything, pre-compose and call this main pre-composed one. This is because I want to remove the first frame from our animation because of the way the loop is set up the first frame is identical to the last one. So when I move between the two, you don't see any difference in the movement at the front here. So if this were laid out on a longer timeline with let's say two loop segments next to each other, when it moves from one to the next, it would repeat that last and first frame. So it would make it a bit longer than it needs to be. So that's why we just need to take it out. So if I go to the beginning, and press page down on the keyboard to advance forward one frame, I can press B to mark that as the new beginning. And then right click and trim comp to work area to completely cut that out. I'm gonna press the spacebar to preview this to the end. I will skip the video and then we can check out how the loop is working. Okay, and this is the final preview. And as you can see here, when it gets to the end of the timeline, it's going to jump back to the beginning. And there we have it. We have our loop.